well, so hope you're all keeping well, uh, staying safe. Um, tonight I've got you a wee fish main course. Uh, it's sea bass. I say you could use any fish with this. I, I like the skin, crispy skin. I'll go to crispy skin up in this one. But you could use salmon, use a bit of cod. If you want to splash out a bit of halibut or a bit of turbot. Um, but really any fish goes with this dish. Um, I'm going to serve it with Jersey Royals. Um, I would use Comer potatoes. They are perfect for this. But I couldn't get any today. So I found a bag of Jersey Royals in the shop. So I'm going to use them. They're perfect as well. They're sort of they're unique. You can't, you know, it's, it's one of these to protect it, like the Comer potatoes. They can't be grown anywhere else. They have to come from that area. And the Jersey, you know, the soil in Jersey is perfect for these potatoes. And the, you know, the fertilizer, they actually use seaweed. Uh, it's fertilized potatoes, so they get that sort of almost acidy taste to it, but they're perfect for this. So we're going to serve it with a few things. We're going to serve it with asparagus, spinach, I say the crushed Jersey Royals, and just roasted baby fine uh, tomatoes. So anyway, I'm going to wash my hands here, just and we'll get started. So I say if you can get hold of the, the cumber potatoes, perfect. Um, use local, use local ingredients. Use your local butcher, your local fisherman. Um, I'd say the big supermarkets will survive, so keep using the local ones. Right, so I say over here, if you want to just have a look, there's the Jersey Royals. They've been cooking now for probably 10, 12 minutes. I'm just gonna, yeah, if the knife goes into them, they're ready. So I'm just gonna drain them now and just let them steam slightly. So I'll just take them off. I'll say they took 10 minutes, 12 minutes took to cook them. So just drain them. And we'll just let them dry there in the bag. Just they'll steam themselves. A lot of people say don't mess with them. Those sort of Jersey Royals or asparagus, just eat them, boil them, salt and pepper, a little bit of butter. You can't beat it. So anyway, asparagus first. So here's some just a couple of peeled already. So they say that the best asparagus in the world comes from England. And the best asparagus in England comes from Worcestershire. And the best asparagus in Worcestershire comes from Asian. And I'd be a bit biased because I used to live there, so, um, but it is, it is beautiful. It is, and asparagus this time of the year is, is perfect. So that's, that's probably enough. So yeah, you just peel it down. It's, it's enough for presentation as well. But sometimes the, the skin can be a bit tough towards the stock. So what we're going to do now is I'm just going to wrap this in the wee elastic band that it came with. You don't want it too tight because you don't want to crush them. And this will probably take in boiling salted water probably no, definitely no more than three minutes. And then we're just going to put that into ice water to cool it down really really quickly. Um, so I'm just going to turn up, turn on my pan to get that sort of, get that hot. And there's the Jersey Royals ready. Um, so what we're gonna, we're gonna actually, when the asparagus is cooked, we're gonna cool it down, and then we're just gonna wrap it in streaky bacon. You could use smoked pancetta, which would be ideal for this, but I have a streaky bacon in the fridge, so we're gonna use that. Uh, I say the spinach, uh, and a few other wee garnishes. So actually, we'll, we'll just do the cherry tomatoes first. Um, I did have a wee, there it is, and I'm just gonna give it a wee, Shake a bowl of oil. That's probably enough. Just clean up. And then just again the mold and salt. Just a wee sprinkle of that. And some pepper. Just make sure it's coat in it. Oh, there's one falling off. That's okay. That's alright. And then just pop that in the oven. Probably less than five minutes. If you want the whole, but you you know, you want them just to warm through. So right, that's that. Asparagus is a couple of minutes. Um, to go in with the crushed potatoes, we're just going to put some spring onions. So we'll just chop them up. We'll have them ready. You can use red onion as well. White onion might be a bit, a bit harsh, but spring onions are ideal for this. So we're just going to keep an eye on the asparagus because you don't want to overcook the asparagus. It just turns to mush. Um, and also in the potatoes we've got some olives. You could 
use green olives, I'm just using black because I've got them. But just a few olives. It's sort of, I would say, it's like Mediterranean type influence. You know, the tomatoes and the olives and things like that's probably enough. So the asparagus has probably had two minutes. I say the fish won't take long to cook, so I'm just going to cut these in quarters. Just so there's a wee bite size in it. And I'm just going to fold them through the, the potatoes when we crush the potatoes. I love olives. You know, olives, well, you either love them or you hate them. I, I do love them. Okay, so that's, that's the olives, that's two. And then also we're going to put some, again, any soft herb. I'm using parsley here um, that you could use. Dill would be perfect with this. Um, chives would be perfect. But I'm just using parsley to put in with the potatoes. So just as, as, as fine as you want. I mean, you, you don't have to have them really, really fine. But just run the knife through them a couple of times. But you don't want it too coarse, I mean, especially with this curly parsley. You don't want it too coarse. So that's the parsley. Okay, and I'm now going to take. I'm now going to take the asparagus off and cool it down in ice water. And it will be ready. I say that was probably definitely no more than three minutes. So I'm just going to lift it out. Here you want to stop cooking as quickly as possible. And just lift it out. Take it out of the, the elastic band. And just let that cool in there for a few seconds. You, know, you want to cool it down as quickly as possible. And then we'll just give it a nice wee wipe down. What we're going to do, we're going to wrap that in the bacon. Um, this is the bacon here. What you can do with streaky bacon is just, just stretch it. Just give it a wee, a wee stretch. And that's, that's one slice, so that's, that's plenty. But you want it as thin as possible. That's why pancetta, if you can get a hold of it, is perfect. This. Or parma ham, serrano ham, any of those sort of Mediterranean. Italian, Spanish hams, they would be perfect for this, but it does work with this big, the streaky big, but make it as thin as you can make it. Okay, so I would imagine the asparagus is now cooled down. Something important to do is just make sure it's dry. Okay, so I'm going to place it in that. I just want it nice and dry. So we're just going to let that dry for a couple of seconds there, just, but you see it's nice and green, it's held its colour, and there's a nice bite in that. So, right, that's that, we will wrap that now. So what we'll do is, just a wee, if you're using pancetta or parma ham, it can be quite salty, so just be careful with the seasoning of your asparagus, just a bit of salt and pepper. I just, I'm going to go with maybe five or six here. So we just, just wrap it nice and tight. And it should hold, hold together. And we're just going to bake this in the oven. I say that bacon is so thin, it won't just tidy it up at the end there. It won't take much cooking. I'll eat those later, don't worry, they won't be wasted. So that's that. So what we're going to do, we're just going to pop that in the oven now, just with a wee drizzle of olive oil. Just a wee tiny... I'm, I'm cooking two bits of fish tonight, but you know, one would be plenty. So just, what you want to do is just roll it in the, the oil. Just get it round. I say I've seasoned that, so that's going to go in the oven sort of four or five minutes. We'll just check the tomatoes. The tomatoes are just sort of sizzling there. They're ready. They're just starting to bubble there, and they're, they're sort of they hold the shape. 
Um, so just going to leave them, keep them warm there. So we'll go to our Jersey Royals. Um, and what we're going to do, we're just going to get a fork and we're just going to lightly crush them. And we're going to put a good dollop of olive oil in here. It will soak it up. You may think that's a pot, but it does soak it up. And just I know people are saying, why would you why would you do this? But it does, it, it absorbs all the flavours. But they are nice, just you know, you can have this fish, Jersey Royal potatoes, a bit of spinach, and you know, uh, so they, that, that's that's as much you want to crush them. You don't want them pureed or anything like that. So we're just gonna put the olives, the parsley, and the spring onions in there. And then we're just going to taste it. And we're going to put a wee squeeze of lemon in there. Lemon, I've always said, is a great, yeah, it's a great seasoning um, for a lot of things. No, not only salt and pepper, it's just, just a wee squeeze of lemon. As I say, I've already seasoned the water when I cook the potatoes, so I'm just going to have a wee taste of it. It might be, it might be alright. No, a bit more salt. Pepper. But that, that lemon just, just gives it a wee sort of, I'm going to go a wee bit more olive oil. And we're serving this with the dressing tonight, we're not serving it with a, a creamy sauce or anything like that. We're just going to serve it with a dressing. So that's, that's that. So I'm just going to leave these over to keep warm. That's, that's the potatoes, you know, and they look nice. You can put some tomatoes in there. I'm just going to put that. Small plate, and that'll just stay warm. Okay, so right now we've we've got the tomatoes done, we've got the asparagus done, uh, potatoes are done. I'm just going to make a very very quick dressing to go with it. Uh, I'll just do it in this here. It's so simple, it, you know, it couldn't be any easier. Just a bit of olive oil, um, some capers. These, this is the acidity you need to sort of go through the dish. Just some capers. And I'm just going to chop some chives through it. Again, any soft herb you've got will be fine. I just have some chives in the garden, so we'll just chop them through it. And then we'll start to cook the fish. Um, I did a video the other day and I'll hold my hands up. At the beginning of it, I says maybe 15 minutes we'll do all this. Um, my camera woman after says that was 42 minutes, so I apologize when you go to watch it. So that's, that's your wee dressing. I'm just going to put a squeeze of lemon in it. Or you could use lime for this here. And I've got a, any juice that comes from this mass, I'm going to put in there. Um, so that's that. Just a simple redressing. Okay, so we'll just set, set that to the side. So now we're going to cook the fish. I say I've got that hot. So olive oil. The secret of cooking fish is don't mess about with it. Don't move it about the pan, don't do all the fancy stuff and flipping it, but this fish here, and just to get this to cook quicker, but this won't, look how thin that is, that's going to cook in four minutes, three, four minutes. I'm just going to mark it with the back with the knife, just score it, and again, that's a bit of presentation, but the heat gets in there and you know, you, you put lemon zest in that, you know, you put your herbs run over it. So we're just going to cook it, pan fry it so it's nice crisp skin. So that's that. And again with the fish, just make sure it's dry well. Make sure, you know, I've got a bit of tissue there, nice and dry. So I'll just get the next thing down. And so salt. I just rub the salt into those sort of wheat slits. 
make sure your hands are right and same on the other side. And again, make sure it's dry. Okay, and secret cooking, I say cooking fish is don't mess about with it, just put it on the pan, let it make its form its own crust. So you'll see there's the oil is starting to shimmer there. You don't want it red, red hot, it just burns straight away. So a piece of fish, just drop it in and drop it away from you. And the same with the other one. And my hands are quite sort of stressed. So what I'm gonna do is just hold it down. Just push it down there <coughs> because it curves. <coughs> Excuse me. So again, don't be moving about the pan. That's that. We're just going to let that sit for a second or two. So the, the tomatoes are there. These are still staying nice and warm. And we're about three or four minutes ready from serving. So we'll just check the asparagus. See what it's like. I mean, that bacon's cooked. It's not crispy bacon. I don't want it crispy. Just want it cooked and holding the asparagus together. So another minute or two for that. So this isn't far. You can see, I don't know if you can get in there. It's just starting to go white around the outside there. And that's it cooking from the bottom up. Again, I haven't touched that yet. I haven't flipped it. I want it to form that sort of crust, you know, the, the crispy skin. And this again will work with place, salmon, um, cod, any sort of fish. Um, so the other thing I'm going to serve with it is spinach, and again, spinach, everybody knows it's good for you, so very, very, very easy to cook, a lot of people are scared of it, but what I'm going to do is just a medium heat pan, my olive oil, or you could use another butter, but I've got the olive oil here, just a tiny, tiny wee bit of olive oil. The spinach. Just put in, I mean, that's, I don't know what, 50, 60 grams of spinach. It looks a lot, but it does well down. And um, again, we're just going to season that. Just some, some of the malt and salt. And a wee bit of pepper. And that will take probably a minute just to come down. So, right, what we're going to do now, we're just going to look under the fish just to see what it's like. I mean, you want a good old six pound. This is this pound's all right. It's not the best pound in the world, but I'm going to leave that for another couple of minutes, just so that that skin goes really, really crispy. Um, just, just give this spinach just a wee mix, and you'll see in a minute that will that will wilt down to nothing. But it's seasoned already there. Um, asparagus again. Yeah, it's, it's perfect. I'm just going to keep it warm in the oven now with the potatoes. Oh, sorry, with the tomatoes. Okay, and we're going to, what we're going to do in about a minute, we're going to flip this and then just give it a really good squeeze of lemon juice. It really sort of lifts the flavour. I'm just going to make sure the potatoes are still warm. Just, I'll give these a little bit. Then you see them starting to really break down as it got away. That's just... That's, that's half a teaspoon of olive oil in there. You could use a wee tiny, tiny knob of butter. You don't need water. Spinach is, I don't know what percent of water, but you don't need water in it. There's enough sort of water in the thing. So just make sure they're warm. Yep, they're still warm. Keep them warm. We'll have another wee look at the sea bass. I'm hoping this doesn't stick, but it shouldn't. Yeah, that's fine, that's one released. You want to invest in a good non-stick pan. This, this one here used to be good, but I still like it. So that's it released. And again, I'm not going to flip it for a few seconds. So turn this, that's off, that's ready now. The residual heat in that will just melt that down nice. You don't want it melted down to a period. So that's that. The sea bass is ready. Firstly, another minute, we'll do that. I'm just going to put the sea bass onto a wee dish when we go to serve it. I'm sorry, some uh, paper just to soak up all the, the water. So that's ready. So, just 
just put that on a wee bit of tissue. Just sucks up all the, the, the excess moisture. And we'll maybe give this sea bass a wee turn. Let's have a look in below. See that beautiful, see the golden brown colour? That is perfect. And as soon as this is over, this is ready. Very, very happy with that. Um, squeeze the lemon. Good squeeze the lemon. Or lime, but lemon is perfect for it. And that's it ready. I'm going to turn that off now. You don't want to overcook your fish. So now we're going to stir it, folks. So we'll get everything out of the oven. And I don't want to say that was 12 or 13 minutes because um, last time it didn't work out like that. So, right. Just dry the spinach. And I'm just going to get the, the fish over here now. See, all the cooking was done on the skin side and it's just finishing off. And when that um, lemon just hits the heat, I'm actually going to add this juice just over the tomatoes. Don't waste it, that's all the flavour. So that's that. So just bring these all over. And start to clean up now. Right, so, chef the thing. Please don't, you don't have to do this, but this is just um, the chef bit of me. So, you can just put a wee, put your spinach in the bottom of a ring. And then potatoes. And just a little warm, just give it another wee taste. Yep. They're lovely. The olives in it really, and the lemon just really dips it. So, you know, put as many potatoes in as you want, but I just, I'm only going to serve a, maybe a restaurant size portion. Um, so you get that, and just lift that off. So again, that's just for presentation, nothing more. Um, and then we'll go to go with the sea bass. We'll just put one over the top and one resting. And then the asparagus, and then just the wee vine tomatoes, just, just sitting in there. Lovely colours. And then just your dressing. And I say the, the, the capers in here and the olive oil and the lemon just gives it a lovely zingy thing to it. And that's it. Anybody could do that, I think. There you go, I'm happy with that myself if I say so. So I'll just I'll get a knife for it and we'll just cut into it just to see how that the fish is nice and moist on a fork. Just clear this away. Um, and a knife. So, there we go, just tidy it up. So that's it. I mean, if you did that on a Saturday night for your husband or your wife or partner, I think they would be happy. And it is, you know, there's only about five ingredients on there, but well, maybe six. So it is simple enough. So we'll just cut into the fish just to see what it's like nice and white and we're just going to cut through a couple of asparagus and a wee bit of potato mm. and a madman for mold and salt that we that mold and salt that we sprinkle over the top I personally think it needs it it's all the salt, brilliant. It just it's a zing to it. You know, it's not it's not bitter, and that's it, folks. You've got you know your fish and three veg there, or four veg. That was beautiful. I made this last night, bakasha. It'll be on one of the recipes, um, the wee videos, and that would be perfect with it. it this is very easy to make. So, folks, you know, give it a try. I'm just gonna dip it in the juice because it is so good. Mm. Lovely. Nice glass of old wine, folks, and that's it. So, it looks a bit of a mess there now, but it's sea bass. You could use any fish with crushed cumber potatoes, but I've got Jersey Royals. 
asparagus that's just been blanched, wrapped in idyllic pancetta, uh, but I put streaky bacon, just really, really stretch it out so it's very, very thin. Um, spinach and just wee cherry tomatoes in the bag, and just a simple, simple olive oil and caper dressing. So that's it, folks. Give it a try. Um, let me know how it goes, good or bad. I'm happy to take any criticism. Um, and we'll get another wee video up for you soon. Uh, probably the bread. We'll do the bread sometime soon because it is simple to make and it is impressive when you see it coming out of the oven. That and those two together, a glass of wine, fantastic. Okay, folks, uh, I'll see you again soon and take care.